Good evening, Facebook fans and friends, and welcome to the Doris Hall James Indie Show. This evening, we have a legendary guest here on the show, and I mean that when you hear his story, uh, you're going to say he is legendary. We have no other than Tamaj Conway here with us. Tamaj, and we have his wife, Charlie Conway. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the Doris Hall so James Indie Show. And as I told you before, I am blessed to have another husband and wife team on the show. Correct. Okay? Because I think that that is wonderful when you both work together to achieve a common goal. Yes. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Appreciate that. Yeah. Now, um, Conway, let's get started because we only have this 45 minutes and we want to okay. we want to cover this. To I'm, the tell, I'm okay. telling everything tonight. I'm telling <laughs> you. Tell it all. all. It's tell, all tell, tell. gonna hang out. I'm telling everything. <laughs> okay, so let's start. You are from Philadelphia. I'm definitely Philadelphia, born and raised. Born at uh, Women's Medical okay. on Wissahickon. Mm -hmm. No mm -hmm. longer there, of course. Mm -hmm. But I lived in North Philadelphia. Okay. I lived in West Philadelphia. I lived in South Philadelphia. Oh. I uh, was in Germantown for a while, and mm -hmm. that's where, I, you know, my music story really begins. It begins in Germantown. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you play any instruments? Yes, uh, piano is my uh, favorite, you know, uh, keyboards. I like keyboards, uh, mm -hmm. synthesizers, and, you know, organ. Uh, I started with bongos. Oh, boy, yeah. okay. I, you know, got my calluses up. Mm -hmm. Then I start. Then I went to uh, guitar, and I got my calluses up, <laughs> and then uh, okay. and, and bass, electric bass. You know, I played the electric bass, messed around with the cello for a minute until mm -hmm. I broke the guy's neck. Uh, so I had always had a fascination. Uh, I had I've uh, played uh, trombone, long tones, with a friend who uh, he's now with. Uh, the Ellington band, yeah, okay. yeah. So, okay. yeah. Well, I, I, I've, I've read um, a lot about you, okay, yeah. and I just yeah. kept reading. It's not it. true. It's, 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 yeah, true. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I didn't do it. I no, didn't do it. Is all I'm good innocent. Stuff. It's all good stuff. And the reason I know it's true is because my yeah. friend T. Life, yeah, okay, yeah, he told me he said you've got to interview Conway. You told me that. He said you've got to do it. And I said, Conway, and he said, yes. He yeah. started out, we started out together, and you have yeah. to hear his story. Yeah. And so I had um, you on my list of all my, my um, artists that I had to interview. Mm -hmm. So then when Double Exposure came on, and they said, you got to get Conway. I said, yes, <laughs> I've got to get Conway. Oh, so then you. I began to read, you know, yeah. and I couldn't begin to tell you all the yeah. songs and all that. But I'm going to leave that up to you. Yeah. Tell me how your music your musical journey began? Well, uh, I got in trouble in North Philadelphia. <laughs> and I, okay. I ran to, uh, to Germantown to stay out of trouble. All right. So that's where I met up with um, uh, Frankie Beverly. Okay. He was the lead singer uh, for the group that we formulated called The Butlers. And it was John Fitch. Who okay. incidentally wrote, wrote Shane, Shane yeah. you know, mm -hmm. uh, a, a fellow by the name of Sonny Nicholson and Joe Collins. And this, the group just mesmerized me, and I had to get be a part of it. And so uh, I found the note, and, uh, <laughs> you know. And you sang your note? I sang my note, okay. and basically I was happy with that. I I just wanted, you know, I believed in Frankie, and I said, this is the goose that laid the golden eggs. I ain't got I, I'm just going to sit right here and just okay. have, you know. But uh, that was not to be, because I got drafted and wound up going to Vietnam. Oh, you got drafted in the military. Yeah, 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 I had that scene, you know, so... Mm -hmm. It it got you know it got a little little ugly and a lot of people, uh, you know, doesn't does not understand what that's like, especially in the music business. And I used to stay quiet a lot when I was around um, my man T Life and a lot of the people that I came in contact with. I was battling with post traumatic stress disorder 
from what I had seen in Vietnam, but I didn't know what it was, so I was trying to internalize what, what I was dealing with. So the reason why people don't know who I am, uh, although I did a lot, mm -hmm. is because there were laps and then I would reinvent myself into another situation. So I was the baritone singer for the butlers, and a lot of people know me as the baritone singer for the butlers. And then uh, I got with, with T Life and began, and we formulated a group where we were like self contained, you know. So I sang and I played piano uh, with that group. Okay. And um, we wound up. Uh, we we went down to the PIR, uh, to PIR, Philadelphia International, International. Records. Right. Uh -huh. So yeah, we went down to get some, uh, some 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 forms for working forms from this guy by the name of Ernie Pep, who used to have a little bit a little bit of the the he used to own a little bit of the Blue Notes. So mm. when we got there, mm. we wound up with a job with PIR. <laughs> so that's how I became okay. a writer, arranger, yes. and a producer. Okay? Uh, so it, it all happened by happenstance. I it wasn't it not. It was meant to be. Yeah, it just was meant to be. Meant to be meant you, know, to be. you know, God puts these things together, mm -hmm. and um, I'm still, you know, uh, amazed that. All the things that uh that he does, you know, uh, he puts in, he puts, he gives me these visions and uh, he's just, he's just, he's, he's all. awesome. Yeah, he's all that. He's all in all. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. So, uh, and that's how uh, you know, I met up with with T Life. He was a uh, a very uh, uh, impressionable. He was a very impressionable guy, and. Uh, you know, we, we've we had uh, uh, some great times together. And I might say, he's he's probably a better producer than I am. You know, well, Although I may be a better songwriter than he is, but I don't know, maybe, I don't know. So, okay. I don't know, maybe, uh, you know, but he, he, is, a, he is a fantastic, uh, I've, I've heard some of his latest stuff and, um, you know, kudos. Well, he thinks very highly of you. Okay, and he says this is who you need to get, and you're here, yeah. and I'm glad that you're here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so um, you started your career really from working with Philadelphia International Records. Is no, that how you started? no, I started my career working with the Butlers, and, Butlers. and, and the Butlers. I, I left out some things. So the Butlers, they we did about four or five different uh, singles, mm -hmm. and um, some of them were like, uh, kind of like, you know, tri-city hits, you know, kind of like in uh, Philadelphia, Baltimore, uh, Washington. Incidentally, uh, since this is going out throughout the world, I just want to say happy um, Martin Luther King Okay, to you know, everyone. To everybody. Okay. You know, definitely a great man. And uh, on uh, 19, uh, 1963, August the 28th, I was at the March on Washington. Okay. Just, uh, okay. you know. But, um, so, uh, we we did uh, uh, a lot of shows for Jerry Blabbit. uh <laughs> High lid, the Gita with the heater, you know. High lid. I mean, these guys worked us day in, day out. I remember uh, uh, Joe. He had this 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 uh, push mobile. We just we just killed him at this at at this uh, at, at this. Hop radio. Yeah, one of his record yeah, hops. One of his record hops, like. you know. <laughs> and, and, you know, we big stars. <laughs> we, we come out and uh, we get into the into <laughs> to, to Joe's car and it wouldn't start. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had to push it, we pushing it down the street, you know. Oh, that was so oh, embarrassing. Man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Hey, mm. 
you know. Funny. Yeah, <laughs> we were headline. Well, we were young too, you know. We were young, so we started out, and then we wound up on a lot of songs for Cameo Parkway because we wound up at Cameo Parkway. They wanted us to. This, this is. I'm telling. They wanted the, the Dovells to have Dovells, to, to have more soul, sound black. That was that with Lynn Barry, right? Lynn Barry, okay. my man Lynn Barry. <laughs> Lynn Barry. Love you, Lynn. Love you I'm too. Just, uh, you know, uh, so they uh, had us sing some of the songs that they sang. You know, to, to give it that the soul, that soul flavor. Okay. You know, and uh, we did. We sang on we sang on songs by uh, Dee Dee Sharp. Uh, we did the Monster Mash, and we got paid thirty dollars. That Aww. song's been out, you know. Where they said we can't pay you like you're in the union and give you royalties because you're not in the union. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna give you this thirty dollars, <laughs> and uh, you know, love you. <laughs> so uh, you know that song's been out for forever. Yeah. Every th Halloween you hear the Monster Mash. Yeah. You know, $30. you know, we made thirty dollars a piece. Yeah, we made thirty dollars a piece. You know, and that was you know. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So, uh, you know, there's there's good news and bad news in in the business. So, you know, that was. Um, but this guy Don Zacharies was so funny. He was, you know, he just made it an experience because, you know. You know, when we went into the into the studio, he had taken soap and 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 drew all over the 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 the, the engineers uh, booth. Mm -hmm. uh, he, had, he had fish, uh, all kinds of uh, different mermaid. You know, he, he drew all this stuff. He was just uh, you, you couldn't stop him. He was he was a practical joker, <laughs> and he was he was just. Uh, uh, he was so funny. Uh, he wound up. He had a show called Shock Theater. You, you, you're not old enough to know. Oh yes, I what, am. You know, I'm uh, old enough. I don't know, but yeah. I'm old enough to know. Well, yeah. Shock Theater came out, and and I was a boy. Yeah. I was a boy. I used to sneak sneak up to watch uh, Shock Theater because I was supposed to be in bed <laughs> at uh, you know at uh, I think it was. 10 o'clock, Shock Theater came on at 11, so I had to sneak up, turn the television down, you know, so that nobody could hear me. But uh, there I was uh, singing the background on, on his song, some of Chubby Checker's song. Mm -hmm. So out of the 60s, you know, okay. I was, I, and we were an intricate part, intricate part of the sound of Philadelphia. Ironically, the, the, the studio was at 309 South Broad. Yes. Which eventually, that's where Gamble, Huff, and Bell moved. Mm -hmm. The PIR. Mm -hmm. They moved at at yeah. that same at that same studio. And so, you know, I seen the whole thing rebuild again. And, mm -hmm. You know, uh, and... And for those artists, when, when, you know, you work for a lot of those artists down there, mm -hmm. such as... Such as uh, the Intruders, mm -hmm. uh, the Blue Notes, uh, the OJs. Uh, was Gene Carn too? Did you do Gene, Gene Carn? Uh, there, there's uh, the Spinners. Uh, the Temptations. I did the Temptations, but it wasn't there. Okay. Uh, the Temptations. Uh, I think we recorded the Temptations. We went to New York. That was when I got with Baker Harrison Young. Okay. And. Uh, that's also when I met uh, Double Exposure and oh, yeah. a lot of those things. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've had some some great highlights uh, in the music business. I worked with Ben E. King. Ben E. King was like my one of my real heroes. I mean, okay. from a kid going going to elementary okay, school, so we were going you. down the street mm -hmm. trying to sing. His song, I'm singing with a guy who who he could sing, but you know, uh, we're trying to make harmony together. And then all of a sudden, there I am one day. Benny King is is in the studio with me on a day that I made goo gobs money from Atlantic Records that day. 
I mean, that was a great day, and I'm there with my main man, <laughs> Benny King. Wow, how, how could it get any That's better? That's so fortunate, isn't yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, you know. And he could have been anywhere, but he wanted to be in the studio, and I was working on his music, and, you That's know, it great. was great. That man. Was it was great. great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so. Uh, so tell me about some of these songs that you've written, because it's so many of them. So can yeah. I choose a couple? Yes, you okay, can. Okay, like, like, it says Disco Inferno. Well, I had, now here's the, here's the, here's the thing. Let's go. That's I did not trace, write. Fella. Let me let let me it's clear this straight. up. Okay, let's go. I did not write Disco Inferno. Okay. I did not produce Disco Inferno. Okay. I did play on Disco Inferno. Okay. However, what happened was when I did uh, Double Exposure. Disco, uh, the Disco Inferno album and the Double Exposure album had come out at the same time. So they said to me, and, 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 and I love Norman, he's a good guy, but the people who he was working for said, look, we cannot give Conway any publishing. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You know, because he's connected with um, he's connected with Gamble Huff and Bell. I was still working for Gamble Huff and Bell, and I might say it wasn't a very good contract that I had. Okay, <laughs> so, uh, but you know that was the business at that time. Uh, so he's so Norman Harris said to me, "Well, look, I tell you what, I can't give you any publishing." on this CD. But what I can do mm-hmm. is I'm going to give you a half a penny <laughs> on the, oh. the Disco Inferno album. Now, oh. now what it was, was it was just like this. It was two pieces of paper. Mm-hmm. You know, neither one of them had really made a lot of noise at the time. If he had known... Uh, that Disco Inferno. Disco Inferno was going to be in a, in a hundred <laughs> albums, a hundred, a hundred major movies. I, I might not have got that. Right, right. Okay? Good, good. So uh-huh. uh, that's the connection. And a lot of people think that I uh, am going around saying that I wrote that song. I did not say that. Okay. But I do say that I have a small piece of the song not anything that I did. I just, I just said, God is good. He evened the whole mm-hmm. thing yeah. out mm-hmm. so that I can get a little piece. Okay. You know, you know, okay. and that's. Well, well, how about, how about, um, is that ten percent? Ten percent. Okay. Yeah, ten percent. I, like I said, I didn't get any of the publishing. Okay. But uh, my writing partner, who co-wrote the song with me. Who is that? His name was Alan Felder. Okay, Alan yeah. Felder. Okay. He's he's deceased now. Mm-hmm. God rest his soul. Uh, he actually got ten percent of the publishing <laughs> on that song. Okay, ten percent of ten percent. Ten percent of ten percent. <laughs> yes, he he did. He got ten percent okay. of ten percent. Uh, I got writers royalties. But there were even some songs on that CD that I had something to do with that I didn't get anything. They talked me into... You uh, didn't know. Well, yes, I knew. You did know. You know okay. But I had... I thought that maybe uh, if I created this track record, which was a mistake, <laughs> that I would eventually uh, be able to work out a, a good deal. I see. But... That didn't happen. I, you know, it, as it turned out, before I could get to the good deal, uh, it started crumbling. The the sound of Philly started crumbling. And then I began to implode because all of a sudden, I, this thing that I was hiding, this, this PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, mm-hmm. that I mm-hmm. received from being in the service, mm-hmm. started to come forth mm-hmm. and you know 
and I don't know why I started getting these flashbacks. You know, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. So while other people were going in the other directions, you know, uh, T Life, you know, he wound up with this super deal with RCA. I wound up uh, uh, kind of combing the streets, you know, in the ghettos of different areas, trying to get drugs, mm -hmm. trying to trying to medicate myself from what I was experiencing, oh, okay. you know. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't until I began to uh, uh, go to certain uh, PTSD groups mm -hmm. that I began to understand what, what that was about. Okay. And then... Uh, Where was the VA at this time? Okay, all right. Uh, well, I, w I started out in New Jersey. And I wound up at mm -hmm. right, right over here at, at the at thirty fourth street. Thirty fourth street, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they did help a little bit. Uh, well, they they helped me in terms of, uh, in, in terms of recognizing that I had, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, post traumatic mm -hmm. stress. Mm -hmm. But you know, it it took a battle before they connected it with service connected. Mm -hmm. And any other benefits oh. that might, uh, you know, that took about ten hard years, and uh, I had to uh, threaten to go to the Supreme Court and all. Mm. That's another story. Yeah, well, you know, um, mm. all the. I want to get back to this here because I'm interested. Um, I want you to choose a song that that you you wrote. Okay? Yeah. And I want you to tell me why you wrote the song. What was the meaning behind that song? Don't well, tell me about it. Uh, wow. <laughs> uh, you know, I wrote so many songs, I got to yeah. be honest. I don't even uh, remember a lot of what was going on. It's like a machine, you know, mm -hmm. writing song after song after song. And, mm -hmm. you know, I do know that a, a lot of it had to do with what I was feeling at yeah. that particular time. Yeah. Uh, some of it may have been a, a partially fantasy or may have been a fragment of something that I had heard mm -hmm. from another song. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, uh, getting back to 10%, mm -hmm. uh, the group Double Exposure had most of the, most of the album done, uh, but they didn't have the song that they were looking for. They needed a hit. So... Uh, they asked uh, me, who was like new blood, you okay. know. So they asked me, and they asked uh, Alan Felder, could we get together and write something? So we went out down to uh, this this club called the Catacombs. Oh, the Catacombs. Yeah, that was on Market Street at the time. Okay. And uh, you know, I could hear the 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 speakers, you know. So I, I, I kind of locked that into my head, you know, and and uh, and I came up with this bass line, and uh, so you know, I, I, I heard this, you know, and that's, that, 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 I, I kept hearing that, you know, and uh, that's where. That that whole thing came from, and then I had had to uh, convince uh, uh, um, uh, Baker. Baker was the bass player, legendary bass player, mm -hmm. and a great bass player. His whole thing was sound, so I was bringing in something new, a new technique that he had to adjust to, because his. His his tonation was impeccable, and that's what he always showed off. So he he liked to play long tones. If he had a play that he would have played, he would have done it like this. He would have just it would have been like that, you know. So, but I said no, no, I don't want that, you know. So we fought over it for a while, and fi finally he gave in. Good. And um, <laughs> you know, the rest is history, you know. Uh, 10% turned out to be one of the biggest mm -hmm. New York sound songs, uh, you know, ever made, I guess. Um, 
I had no idea how big it, it was because I was a workaholic. So yeah, you, you did some you know. good stuff. Yeah. And you're so busy working and yeah. putting out songs. Yeah, I didn't have a clue. Yourself, right? yeah, I didn't have a clue. I didn't have a clue until I went to New York. Mm -hmm. When I went to New York, mm -hmm. then I went to New York to pick up my gold album for that song, you know, and they had built a company. I couldn't even get in the company. You know, <laughs> I, they didn't, it was like, I said, well, this is T. Conway. When they started out, they started out in a, in a garage. Oh, they 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 was on Madison Avenue, you know. <laughs> when I, when I came up, you know, and I couldn't get in, so I'm cussing, and uh, you know, they finally let me in. This crazy man down here says he, you know, he said he bought the building basically, <laughs> so I came in, you know, and I. Uh, you know. And it was big when they saw that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah well, let's, let's go with, um, there are a lot of um, musicians in Philadelphia. Right. And since we've been doing the show, right. I mean, it's a lot. You know, I knew it was a lot. Right. I didn't know it was a lot, a lot, a lot, you know. <laughs> and I meet them all the time. You yeah. Know? A lot of time. And, and they're, they're struggling. Yeah. Um, they're working clubs, they're, yeah. they're trying to get venues, they're doing right. all right. kinds of things. Right. But what makes Philadelphia so special when it comes to music and musicians? What makes us so unique? Okay, I'm going to build it up and I'm going to tear it down. Uh-oh, here we go, tell us okay. the truth. Okay, so <laughs> uh, this is from my perspective. Okay, so no doubt we've got some of the greatest musicians, some of the greatest talents uh, in Philadelphia. What happened that made it uh, such a uh, commercial, uh, well, what's the word I'm looking for, commodity? Uh, Philly had the backing of Columbia, which is the mafia. And they will make you an offer that you can't refuse, okay? <laughs> so, though we, though, now, not taking anything away from the talent, I mean, you had the second string violin players, you know, um, and uh, Gamble, you know, Kenny Gamble was a genius. Mm -hmm. He, uh, he had all these uh, people who he put together, you know, uh, the the rhythm section was basically the rhythm section from the uptown okay. so so i i was just a small yeah. a basically yeah, yeah yeah i was basically just a small you know I, I i i can't really take a whole lot of credit i just took advantage of being in the right. mix right. of this army of great talented people mm -hmm. you know uh now you know, the stuff that I do now is not, it, I think it's it, it's fantastic when you think that I when you realize that I have PTSD, and uh, you know, and I'm basically uh, I I'm going from from my from my my basement to the, to the radio and the internet with you know I think it's it's great, but it's it's it does not compare with. Uh, some of the great musicians that came uh, out of the Philadelphia, you know, you got uh, you got MFSB who was and that's who I'm interviewing next week. I okay, have, um, Dennis Harris. Oh man. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. a great musician, mm -hmm. a great musician. You know, mm -hmm. uh, tell you know, give him my love. Yeah, and, I have to connect. You know, we want to connect yeah. people together because, yeah. like, one guy said that he hasn't he hasn't seen Winston Gay in like. 50 years, and he was wow. working with yeah. Winston Gay. Yeah. It was LTD. Yeah, LTD. You know, so, yeah. Yeah. you know, I have to change, exchange numbers. But let right. me take a minute and say hi to okay. our Facebook family and friends. All right. And we have, um, do you see this? You want to see it too? Okay. We have Steve Mason. Okay. Hey, Steve. Steve. What's up, yeah. buddy? Um, Michelle Navez. Okay, oh. my daughter. -in -law. Michelle. Oh, okay. James Jackson. Hello. What's up, buddy? Craig Thompson, Joseph oh, yeah. Smith. Okay. Let's see if I can get this up a little bit. Okay. Um, 
Oh, Sandy Sykes, my sister. Okay. Joe Harris from oh. Double Exposure, right? My main okay. man. All right, all Yvonne right. Yvonne Candy. Hi, Yvonne. Thank you. <laughs> Great yeah. interview. Thank you. Wardell Piper. Hi, oh, Wardell. man. Hey, okay. babe. And then we have. If you don't say tea life, you I'm going to say. I'm a, I'm a carrot. I'm going to wait and say tea life last. Because I know he wants me to say his name. And then I'm going to uh, go my to man. Marcy Francis. Okay. Okay. Hello. And Terrence Tracy Nelson. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. And Viola. That's my next door neighbor. Hey, Viola. Stanley P. Briston. Okay. Matt Green. Oh, yeah. My Sorry. man, Matt Green. And now I can say tea life. <laughs> he's here with us, and he's saying that was my favorite song, the Monster Mash. Oh yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, and that was funny because we were down the Clef Club and we did a spoof at on that song uh, for um, uh, Denzel Washington. I think it was his birthday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at down at the Clef Club. T Life got up and did uh, a little roast to the Monster Mash. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, you've had a, a, well, a great career, but I want to go to Charlie for a minute. Can Absolutely. I? Okay. Absolutely. Now, it's all Sashko. Yeah. Now, now um, Charlie, how do you, do you work with uh, Conway in his, through his musical career? I mean, what do you do? You're involved um, in it? Basically, I'm the computer wizard okay. for him and... Um, I do a lot of the album designs. Oh, do you? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, just handle some day-to-day -day stuff that, mm -hmm. you know, he needs me to do. Okay. And, you know, so we are trying to get She it. knows all the passwords. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 She knows all the passwords. She yes. does know all the passwords. Yes, and when I don't know it is I forgot password and we can always get me one. <laughs> Oh <laughs> well, yes, um, okay. you know I'm in there with him and um, listen to some of the that's stuff. Great. He'll call that's me great. down. Oh, and, that's great. And I'll listen to it and and give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Or I was like, hey, can you put this in it? I hear right. kettle drums. I think I told you one time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But you know we, I'm, you know, okay. with him. And well, he's good. with me, and I'm glad. Now, tell me about this new venture, this new business you started. Tell me oh, about that. Oh, my goodness. Well, I retired back I in I want all the ladies to listen to 15, this now. I retired. Okay. And for a whole year, I did nothing. Well, back and forth with mm -hmm. him and doing some of the music stuff. Mm -hmm. But I wanted something else to fulfill my day up. And um, I thought about something to do. So what I what happened was I I remembered I liked to sew. So I was like, okay, I really don't want to make clothes this time because clothes is sizes and fit and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I was like, the perfect fit is a purse. <laughs> okay. So now I'm doing bags, all kinds of bags, accessory, purses, scarves, um, I made, um, recently I made a travel set, which consists of a garment bag, a duffel bag, and a shoe bag. And I'm doing uh, fundraisers for churches. Okay. And you're just as busy yeah, as Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. busy, and I'm, I'm enjoying it because yeah. I love to do the sewing, and I'm making them myself. So it may take a little while, but... Um, Eventually, everybody will get their orders out <laughs> and stuff. But well, that's what's the what company I'm doing. name? The company name is Charlie's Bags with a Z, okay. B A G Z. Charlie with an I, no E. And um, I came up with that name when I first started working mm -hmm. at the age of seventeen, outside of babysitting. Well, we got a, a real job, yeah. and. Um, First day I started working, my co-worker called me Charlie because she couldn't pronounce my name. You pronounce it for us. It's Charsetta. Charsetta. Yes. Okay. And she... That's beautiful. Though. Most people that's can't beautiful. remember, Charles so they go to Charlie's. So mm -hmm. That's how I came up with it. Well, now name. tell me about the umbrella services. You have uh, a company called Sasha. 
Sashko. Sashko? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now tell me about the umbrella of services underneath Sashko. Well, it has your started out as, as with the music. Okay. And the then we music. have a children um, book. Yeah. Children. Yeah. Division. Division. Yeah. And then now we have the Charlie's bag that joined okay. in. So this is part of the children's division. Yes. Yeah, that and is, we have, yes, um, a, can, am I holding this There's section? a CD that, that, uh, that goes with that, yes. That goes with that. Okay. And we have a CD to go with this. And yeah, this is there's part a CD. Of okay, and here's the yeah. CD. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is part. And that, and that book, we call that an activity book, and we both designed it, right. and we had some friends help us with some yeah. of the artwork, and inside the book is coloring mm -hmm. and activities where you have, um, you have puzzles, oh, and yeah. the CD takes you through the story. Hold it up. And um, the, the CD takes you through the story, mm -hmm. and he did all the music. Mm. Okay. The CD and it's act out. We it's acted out. The story's acted out with actors and actresses, and he did all the music on the CD. <laughs> and um, currently we are doing David and Goliath. Is it? Yes. For animation. That's excellent. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, I just want to go over a couple of these CDs. Right. Okay. Explain. This one and these are giveaways. Okay, yeah. Uh, this is a giveaway. Uh, if you um, uh, contact Doris, uh, I don't know what the. Uh, you have to forgive me. I don't know what 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 the uh, the procedures are. Right, but and I will send it to them. Yeah, I will send it. Yeah. So um, and if you uh, do uh, our email, mm -hmm. which is. Uh, Conway, C O N W A Y, dot music, mm -hmm. spelt with a Z, M U Z I C, at Gmail. We'll send you our single uh, via, via your email. And uh, so this here is our latest project. Uh, homegrown. Corporate Praise is the name of the CD. Okay. And um, I want everybody to get one. Okay. I want you to have it so bad, I'll give it to you. <laughs> so, <laughs> you ain't got to buy it, I'll give it to yes. you. Yes, it's a lot of good stuff on there, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go over this one here. Okay. So, this is called The Key of Love. We've got a video out. Uh, on our uh, video channel, and uh, I don't know the ad the address to my YouTube uh, channel. I think channel. It's, it's, it's you your YouTube channel. I think it's T Conway. T Conway or T G Conway. Yes. YouTube. So, yeah. Uh, so like I said, she has his backup. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I absolutely. can't remember his words or all his passcodes either. <laughs> Yeah. Well, okay. So, now, now tell me a little bit about um, what you're doing now. So, Bring us up to date. Okay. Okay. So uh, now I am. Uh, I got. I got this idea that since I, I it, act of God actually. Uh, to have been paid by all these different. <laughs> Uh, major movie companies mm. that I would take this project uh, that I'm that this vision and pitch it to uh, these companies once I get it to a certain uh, uh, point and I'm working on I got uh, I got kids uh, between the ages of uh, how old is Jada 11. Jada is 11. Uh, and so, yeah, they all, you know. And then I have uh, a niece who is uh, around 20-something. Uh, She's playing the part of, uh, of my grandmother, which is uh, Lottie Conway. So she's Lottie Conway. And uh, the scene takes, takes place in South Philadelphia. There's a... 
there's the Conway family. So what happens is, what I'm working on now is, is two stories in one. So it's the story of David and Goliath mm -hmm. is, is, is the main story that I'm trying to uh, put in a way that children can understand it. Okay. But there's a sub-story from, from Tom, who is me, who gets his brand new bike taken by this big giant of a guy, mm -hmm. of a kid, mm -hmm. you know. So just like David, who was a kid, has to fight that giant, Tom has got to get his bike back from this kid who took his bike. So you have uh, two ways of understanding that it takes courage and uh you have to stand up for yourself, okay. you know, and, and uh, I've got uh, my, my nephew who is, uh, he's around 12, wow. mm -hmm. so, um, and a couple of other young kids, That's great. and uh, That's great. I'm looking to, to hear from you. Yes, I have some kids. I have a 501c3, okay. and um, we okay. teach them, mm -hmm, and we teach them how to play music. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I have kids from the age of, I think my youngest one now is about six. Does any of them sing? Well, I have one that sing, and he's a mm -hmm. uh, he. Uh, oh, great! He. I'm looking for a he. He is really good. I'm looking know? for and a he. Are you? I need a he. He is really good, and he's. I'm trying to think. Nine, mm -hmm. nine. I think nine or ten. Mm -hmm. He is excellent. Okay. And he will be right. glad. He will be glad. Wow! Yeah, I have girls too. But most most of my students are boys. Okay, can you yeah. believe that? Oh, that? That sounds good. Yeah, uh, and yeah. I have some. I have one talented um, little girl, and she's about eight. Okay, and she dances, she sings, she plays piano. Okay, so I, have, I have a pretty good uh, group right. for you. So well, we'll yeah, contact. We can that. use it. We can use. We can use okay. them all. all yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. That's good. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now, musically, you have a new CD out. I have a new CD out. Okay. Although, you know, I got, I have different genres. So, I didn't, I didn't, I haven't made. I just have a release on the Butler CD, which is kind of like uh, old school R and B back in the day. You know, so you know you. You know, you like old school, we got it, you know, you got to check that out. Okay. So, yeah. Right. So, um, the name of the song is called, uh, uh, I'm Sorry, you know, it's kind of a, uh, kind of a Valentine Day, we're going to do a Valentine Day kind of push on it, and I hope you get a chance to check it out, it's, it's, it's really nice. Well. And then, uh. The, the the group bittersweet is kind of like a pop kind of thing uh somewhere she's somewhere between uh Adele and uh uh who else would you say i mean she's 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 yeah yeah she's she's got a lot of talent she she pretty much can sing anything anything yes. yeah she did um yeah uh Katie K Katie Perry Katie Perry yes. yeah, yeah. Uh, she all gets about a, that bass. Yeah, all yeah, about, oh, yeah, no, yeah. that wasn't K K no, Perry. Bass. That was um. Uh, yeah, but they get K yeah, Perry yeah, was, was, was they get a standing yeah, ovation yeah. every night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so. Uh, now, uh, have you ever considered writing writing a book? I mean, it's so it's so much uh, that, you're, that you've been through and. And it's, I might go to jail if I write a book. You think you'll go to jail? Uh, I mean, there, there's so much, you know. I, I've led such such a, a such an enormously uh, blessed with grace mm -hmm. life, you know. Some of the things that I have uh, escaped from, uh, you know. <laughs> God bless fools and babies. I was not a baby, so I was a big fool at times. I got myself into a lot of different situations, and somehow uh, I got out of it. I I can't. I gotta say, if it wasn't for the Lord, where yes. would I be? Yes. You know. So. But you look like this mm -hmm. kind of person that, and I could see you on the book cover. Yeah. And you're telling 
you know, you're telling the story and and then you're telling about your music and all because huh. what you were. You're I can not see him like knocking on, on my door now, saying, "You come with us." Yeah, you come with us. <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah. yeah, we got this case from 40 years ago. <laughs> yeah, you know, we finally got you. Oh, mm. yeah. Well, you know, I think that you know somebody's gonna get you sooner or later. Mm. You know, one of these all these guys, these yeah. publishers, something, yeah. they come and approach you. And I say, have so many unbelievable stories. You got stuff I mean, to it tell. would be like, it, it would be like telling, you wouldn't believe it. It's, it's too, you know, but it, it's so, it's no way you could lie. You know, some of the things that I've done uh -huh. or been of experience, mm -hmm. okay. you can't, you can't make it up. Okay, now we want to go to. Um, hey, can you imagine? Can you imagine this? The Chronicles Ooh. of Tea, tea Life and Talmadge. <laughs> Ooh, two teas together. Oh wow! Ooh, you would have to read that. Oh man! But um, when we oh, before been, we they, went, they got stories to tell. Before oh, yeah. we went on the um, set, we were talking about who inspired you. Right. And who was it? Oh who man! Was it? Was you it know. Well, he he was a he was uh, I guess you could say one of my childhood uh, uh -huh. idols. But I, I would say if there was anybody that uh, inspired me the most, it would have to be Ray Charles. Okay. It would have to be Ray okay. Charles. Yeah, I loved the way he played uh, that that cross between uh, that fusion like between gospel and jazz. And, R and B, you know, and uh, you know, I never set out to really be a R and B writer. I never set out to be a disco writer. Mm -hmm. Although I remember looking in a songwriters magazine once and found out that I was the number two disco writer in the United States. I'm going around yes, saying, yes, uh, yes, yes, what, yes. What, "What's disco?" I have no idea what disco was. <laughs> you know, I'm in the magazine as the number two disco writer. I had not a clue what disco was. You know, I just like to write music. I like to write songs, tell a story. You know, you know, and uh, you know, other people categorize, categorize. You know, and that's how I became an R&B writer and a disco writer, etc. Well, yeah. what words would you have, in, inspirational words would you have to give to our, our younger, um, our young music, musicians who are trying to make it in the music industry? What advice would you give them? Well, I would say don't give up your dream. Mm -hmm. Keep your dream. Mm -hmm. Keep working on your dream. Yeah. That's what I would say. I would say keep working on your dream. And those who know the most mm -hmm. get the most. Those who know the least <laughs> get the least. Right. So learn all you can. Know the most. Be the one that knows the most. Mm -hmm. You know. And that's uh I learned that from uh from uh Mr. Kenny Gamble. He, that's his. I'm. I'm giving you a quote from his quote. Okay. Those who know the most get the, get the those most. Those who knows the least get the least. Okay. So it did pretty well for him. So yeah, it did fine for him. Yeah. Well, now I'm gonna let you talk and um, you know in the interview, in the interview, and say whatever you want to say to Facebook fans and friends. Mm. Just, just talk. You know. Yeah. Well, you know, I thank all. I thank. Uh, Brother T. Life and okay. uh, Joe Harris and all the um, Double Exposure uh, people who um, have helped my career. You know, I love you, man. And um, I'm, I'm glad to know that you thought about me in the situation that I'm here now. I'm blessed uh, to be here. And uh, I'm just sorry that we got to go, man. I mean, you know. <laughs> I'm ready to hang out. Let's do something. You know, okay. we can still hang out <laughs> you know, right over it. You know, let's, 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 you know, yeah. Let's, let's, Maybe let's. we all should get together one of these 
weekends mm -hmm. or something and just go and just yeah. have a good time, right? Yeah, yeah. well, I'm looking to to uh, uh, really investigate what, what you want to do and, uh, mm -hmm. and talk about some things, man, okay. you know. And to you young people, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of what I look like, <laughs> you know, I may look like a dinosaur, but, you know, in my heart, I still got juice. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's get together and do something. You know, all you young people, you need, you need what I have. I need what you have. You know, you know. I know a lot of people who I've approached and said, "Hey, you know, uh, you you got something," and you know, they didn't get with me. Now they're working uh, uh, at a at a fast food restaurant. Yeah, we can help. We can you know. help them. We, you know, yeah, let's get together and help Connect each other. Connect one another together. Yeah, yeah, you know. So, um, the industry is based on, on, on young people. Yeah. I say, hey, you know, you need to know what I know. Mm -hmm. And I'm willing to... To share. To share. I mean, what, what, I'm, what else I'm going to do with it? Take it with me? Yeah, let me you share. Know? Because so, they need to know. Yeah, they need to know, you know. We have so, to keep our music alive. Let's keep the and, music and, and alive. And we got to keep it alive yeah. with the youngers. Yeah. Okay? Get them yeah. now at this yeah. point yeah. to get in there and do and do this for us because right. we won't be here to right. do it. So they have to pick up and do it. Yeah. I agree. So and, um, what we do is we share this interview. And I always okay. say the the one... Maybe two now because I have so much giveaways. Okay. To share the minute, the interview the most. Right. Then I give them a CD or I download right. one of your new songs for them. Right. And we're going to stick to that. Yeah. So we want you to take and we want you to share this video. It was very informative. And Conway's Thank been you. around for a very long time. Yeah. And he has a lot of lot of gifts that God has given yeah. him. I mean, God's yeah. giving you all these gifts, and mm -hmm. He's willing to share these gifts with you. So let's take advantage of it. I worked with all the groups of the '70s. Just about everybody that was out in the seven in the '70s, you know, Spinners, OJ's, Temptations, uh, Four Tops, Ebony's, Blue Notes, mm -hmm. Dells, Dubs, uh, you name it. You know, I've worked with uh, Lola Falana, um, you name it, you know. Uh, we got to use you. Yeah, so we you can, know, let's, let's yeah. do it. Let's, let's do it. I'm still here. <coughs> what, what's up? <laughs> I'm still here, you know. <laughs> where's, okay. where's everybody at? You well, know. Hopefully, they, hopefully they will contact us. Okay? Yeah, please. Now, my email is, is uh-oh, it's Doris at... D H J Indie Show dot com. Okay. I have a lot of emails here and I can't remember, but you can go to my Facebook page and it's right there. So you can okay. just send me an email and um, I can send you a copy of the CD yeah. that Con Conway left here for you, your right. special person, yeah. and then you can contact Conway. Uh, me, me at uh, you contact me at uh, Conway C O N W A Y. Mm -hmm. Dot. Don't forget to put that dot in there. Mm -hmm. Music spelt with a Z. M-U-Z-I-C mm -hmm. at gmail.com. Okay, and you have yeah. a website? Yes, I do have you a have website. A Charlie? Charlie? Slash <laughs> <laughs> go, S-A-S-H-C-O, publish, musicpublishing.com. And uh, Charlie Bags is, um, you can find me on Facebook under Charlie, C-H-A-R-L-I-B-A-G-Z. And that same um, spelling at gmail.com if you want to contact me for some bag orders. Okay. <laughs> I've got That's a whole right. bunch of Philly bags at the moment. <laughs> No, yeah. I'm sorry, not Philly, but Eagles bags. Yeah, I've seen some yeah. Dallas Cowboy yeah. bags, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have to mention yeah. that. But uh, my webpage is, is D. Hall, uh, D. Hall, James, 
indie show. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think that's my, uh, you know, but it's on my Facebook page. You can get it too. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. And um, I want to say thank you to all the Facebook fans and friends for joining us tonight. Very inform informative interview. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. guys, for accepting my invite and being yes. here tonight. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you, Gilbert, for producing us and taking time to get all this stuff ready. Thank okay. you, bro. And um, mm -hmm. next week, all good. Next week, January thirty-first, our guest would be no other than Dennis Harris from uh, MFSB. Okay. Love him. He will be yeah. here at one o'clock p.m. And Terry Price, my longtime friend, oh. he's a songwriter, okay. singer, and producer. He will be here at eight o'clock p.m. So please join us while we we'll, we travel through their musical journey with them. Right. Okay. All right. And now we're going to sign off. And once again, we say thank you and enjoy your evening. Peace. Peace. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs>